Another great film by Christopher Nolan, The Prestige. This one's incredible too. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, he's a really good filmmaker, I think, personally. He's he's really out there. He's impressive. He's creative. Um, yeah, so let's get into this one. Um, so, 15 things I like about The Prestige. So, the first thing, camera composition. The movie's really well shot, once again. You know what? I'm just going to go through these three things that are pretty much evident in all of his films. So, camera composition, lighting, and color palette. Gorgeous looking film. Like, it's, it's really nice to look at. Um, you know, especially some great combos with lighting and color palette, like some darker looking scenes, but they just, they look beautiful. Like, they really look beautiful in these, like, settings. And on top of that, the production design in this movie is really cool. Like, you really buy the setting that they're in. It's, uh, yeah, it's a really nice looking movie, but very believable as well in the setting. Um, yeah, really impressive in that regard. All right, so the next thing is, uh, acting. So, we've got Hugh Jackman, we've got Christian Bale in this, we've got Scarlett Johansson, like, man, there's other great actors. Oh, Michael, um, Michael Caine? I think it's Michael Caine, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, he's in a lot of his movies too. Um, like, he was, you know, in the Batman movies as, um, Alfred and stuff. It's cool that there's actually a character called Alfred in this too. <laughs> um, yeah, Michael Caine. Yeah. And then Rebecca Hill. Like, this is a really good cast. This is a really good cast. And then, um, even, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, where is he? Andy Serkis, like Andy Serkis is in the movie, and he's cool too. A like, great cast, and just really great performances, and on top of the performances, especially the two lead actors, there's some really great dramatic moments in this film, particularly from Hugh Jackman. But yeah, they pull off some really good dramatic moments in this film. Yeah, I, I really love the performances in this film. So the next thing is the music. Now, this is very subtle, compared to most of Nolan's films, where the music is very evident, and, you know, blaring, and... <laughs> It's a little bit different. It's um, it's more subtle, but it gives a very ominous vibe and a very kind of mystical vibe, I guess. And it's really cool. It kind of gives you chills, I feel, when you watch it. So yeah, I love the music in the film. I, I very much grew to love it the more times I watched it, that's for sure. The next thing is uh, narration. So throughout the film, you kind of hear the two different characters kind of talking and reading each other's diaries. And I really like that. It kind of ties it in really nicely. Um, I think that works really well. Yeah, I think it's very... I don't know if you really class as narration, but it's like, it's not... They're kind of like, yeah, reading what, you know, their diaries and stuff. So it's not really dialogue scenes where they're talking. It's... I guess you would class it as narration. Anyway, so yeah, that was a cool thing I liked about it too. Next thing is the story. So just, yeah, the general story of the film and how these two people are rivaling each other. They're basically pranking each other. But they, they, out of hate, almost, you know, they, they do not like each other. Like, they, at first they like each other, but this thing happens, um, in case you haven't seen it, I won't say, but this thing happens and it causes them to, you know, um, mess up each other's magic acts and all that and their performances. And that's really cool. Like, it's a really interesting story. And, yeah, I like that a lot. I guess you could almost say I like the concept about it too, but anyway. The next thing is uh, characters. I really like the characters, um, particularly the two main characters, and kind of, due to some things that are revealed to it's fascinating, which um, I'll bring up in a second, but the next thing I'll say, so yeah, characters are great, I think they're really good in the film. Next thing is the humour. I think there's some good little moments of humour, like most Nolan films, there's some little bits of humour here and there. Um, I love it when, um, this one bit with uh, Christian Bale, when he messes up uh, Hugh Jackman's act, and it's to do with like this transported man thing. And he comes out, and it's meant to be Hugh Jackman, but he comes out. I love that whole little bit, it's so good. <laughs> uh, I felt like I was one of those audience members just laughing along with it. Like, I thought that was really cool. But yeah, just little moments of humour here and there. I think it, it's great. I, I like the humour a lot. Next thing, what I was saying before, the revelation. Oh my goodness, the revelation in this film. What? And it's kind of there the whole time. Like, when you watch the film again, there's so many hints to it. Like, hints two things, you're like, oh my gosh, that's this character, oh, now it's this guy, now it's this guy, particularly with Christian Bale, that's all I'll say, like, there's kind of two things going on there, I really like that, that was really awesome how they did that, that was, that was impressive, how they were able to pull that off. Next thing, uh, the setting, so the general setting of the film, like, along with the production design, but I found the setting, oh my gosh, I just realized my window, oh, sorry about that, I just realized my window was open, well, oh, I guess it's going to be a bit of traffic in this, most of this video. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, the setting is great. Like, Thomas Edison, um, 
is even slightly mentioned in the film, even though Tesla is like the main person kind of Hugh Jackman goes to for trying to figure out something in the film. But like Thomas Edison is even slightly mentioned in the film and just certain things. And I really like that. Like, yeah, they kind of incorporate it into the kind of the history of things. Um, even though it's not true at all, this film, it's, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating. Um, what they do with it. I, I really like the setting that they create in the film. Last thing, oh, not last thing, second last thing, rewatchability. And because of the revelation and the way things pan out, it gives it great, great rewatch value because you kind of like see things you didn't see the first time. And it's like, oh my God, how did I not notice that? <laughs> it's uh, really cool. And just in regards to how the film's made is impressive too. Just the filmmaking is really solid, I think. But yeah, great rewatch value. And last but not least, the ending. Um, <sighs> I gotta admit, the first time the ending, I was like, what? But then, like, I got it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this ending is fantastic. Like, as I said once again, it kind of reveals a lot at the very end, and it just hits you, it's like, wow. So, yeah. That's The Prestige. Yeah, I very much like this film. Um, I'd love to have a conversation in the comments below about this film. So, if you've got anything to say, you know, positive, negative some, I don't know, behind the scenes stuff you found that was interesting, just, just put it in the comments below. I'd love to continue a discussion about this film in the comments below. Or maybe even put down, because I've done a few Nolan films now, I've done like Tenant, Inception, uh, Dunkirk ages ago, and now this one. So I've done a fair few of Nolan's films. Um, but yeah, tell me like what's your favourite Nolan film even? Like, oh, that's a good question even for me. I'd have to have a look, because I kind of rank stuff best to worst in regards to the number of things I, I like in a film. It'd probably be either Inception, I know Interstellar's up there, which is kind of crazy, a lot of people aren't as crazy about that one. Um, I like it a lot though, I think it's really good too. Uh, so um, yeah, thoughts down in the comments below, and um, yeah, I'll catch you next time.